over here with the move, I had to say moving and is jump is false for the sound to play. Uh, I just did that without you guys seeing to fix the sound for when I'm moving around. All right, so I jump on you, I get a score. Good. If you touch me, if you touch me when you're fixed, so pop up back up after five seconds, then I lose a life. And you touch me again, I lose, lose another life and squash you. All right, so now I want to be able to uh, uh, like knock it off. But what I think I'll do is I'll add some force to that hitting. So it's like a hockey puck. Go back to the scene window. Let's have the can selected. And here on the collider, there's a material. We're going to have to make a physics collider material. And this is different than a material that we put out on the textures. Go here and I'll right click and I'll say create physics material. Well, I'll just call it the can material. In the inspector window, we could see that there's dynamic friction, which is the friction when it's moving to slow it down. And then there's static friction that stops it from starting to move. I want to lower the static friction. I will lower this, like maybe 0.3. Then there's also the bounciness of the can. One will be fully bouncy and zero is not bouncy at all. I'll make it half bouncy. And then these two things, do I take the average of the two frictions of two objects or do they take the maximum between the two? So I'm going to take the maximum. But then over here on the collider for the can, I could pick can physics material. So first let me crush it. And then, yo, I flipped it. Yeah, it's not, it's not bouncing or anything. So that's not working. When I hit that can, I have to add a force to make the can move. Who will add that force to the can? So let's look at the player script. When I hit the can, let me just shrink everything down. So when the player hits the can, that's on collision enter. And maybe I'll, I'll be adding another function to the can script push. And then I'll give it a direction that I push it in. So let me go back to the can script. What I'll do is I'll make another public function here, public void push can. And I'll take a vector three of the direction to be pushed in dir, for direction. Does the can have the rigid body variable yet? No. So we'll make a variable private rigid body RB equals null. And then in the start, we'll just get a pointer to that RB equals this dot get component rigid body and push can we could add a force. So RB dot add force, it wants a direction to add the force in and that's what this DIR is going to be. And then I'm just going to use the force mode velocity change. So now this is a public function that I could call from the player when I hit it. This is the part where the player touches the can, which is a tag as an enemy. And now I could call script can dot push can. I have to give it a direction. Uh, I'll write some more code to figure out a direction, but for right now, I'll just say vector right. Let's see what happens. First, I have to crush it, and I'm going to hit it. Ooh. I think I got a problem here. If uh, script can dot mode equals can dot crush and is jump equals false, then I'll do this push can thing, cut and paste, uncomment it by removing these two dashes. And vector three right is only a value of one. I'm going to multiply it by a little bit more. I'll say five just to test it with. Let's see. Press play and let's see what happens first. I'll have to crush it. Okay, now I'll push it. Let me add more force just to check. Let me say 10. This is experimental. You know, I got to see what works. Press play. Bum -ba -dum. Ooh, first I got to stomp it. Stomp. Okay, now. What the heck? There's nothing. Well, that moved. How about now? Yeah, that moved. Sometimes it moves and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, let's have it move back on the Z and let's just make it a force of like something really powerful, like 50. Whoa. Okay. That definitely happened. Here, something's wrong. I could make this a little bit easier to read. I could use a switch statement instead of ifs. 
So I can say switch um, script can dot mode, and then I can say case and can mode dot fixed. That'll do one thing and break. And then case, if it's crushed, then I'll do the other thing. So now with a switch case, after the case statement, I can put as many commands as I want. And then when it hits break, it'll come out of the switch statement. I'm gonna test to see if I'm jumping. If is jump equals true, then I will play the stomp. I will add score, I will crush the can, I'll do all those things. If I hit it and it's fixed, but I'm not jumping, basically I'm going to lose a point. But I have that covered in the can script. I guess I could simplify things and put it all here in the player script. So if I just comment out this collision enter over here with the player, if I touch the can in fix mode and I'm not jumping, then I'll lose a point. Take that code that I had from can, here it is. I lose a life copy so I'll have it all controlled here in the player script and I can uncomment that here is I crush the can and here is can takes a life down down here if the can is crushed all right it's like a hockey puck and I want to push it so I'm going to say script can dot push can vector three dot back. Now it's not going to stay this way. I just want to make sure that the push happens and I'll still leave it like some big number like 50. So I could really tell if it pushed and these two ifs could go bye bye. See these ifs, maybe I have to move them around a little. Um, first off, if the player hits the plane, let's do that. Cut. The plane is always below me else I hit. Sorry guys, I'm doing some code surgery here. Else if now it's gonna matter if I'm coming up or down. I think the first thing I need is the script to that enemy object so I could communicate with it. So I'll get the script. And now what I do when I touch that is gonna depend on the mode. All right, so when I hit the can, there's three different things that could happen. I could crush it, it could take my life, or I could push it. Hopefully that is a much more simple scenario that works. We're going to test it out. So first thing we'll test is the can touches me and it takes a life. Good. It takes a life. Now we're going to test. I jump on it and I crush it and it just, just shot out of the air. Okay. Let's try that again because I jump on it. It's like I hit it twice when I jumped on it. Hmm. On the second hit where it moves like for this push, I want to add a condition. So if previous velocity y is less than zero, like I'm coming down from a jump, I don't want to push it. So it basically has to equal zero for me to do the push. That's kind of like what I want to hit it from the side. So the, the, the velocity in y has to be zero. So when I jump on it, there's a little bit of bounce. Okay, and then the second hit knocked it out. It was kind of hard to see that. Let me make the strength a little less, put it back to 10. And just wanna, I wanna see what's happening here. So first hit, okay, good. Now I hit it from the side and it slides. Okay, good. So now I want it to move in the direction I hit it. So how do I know what the direction I hit it is? Hit direction. I'll have to subtract two vectors to get a direction. Vector three direction will equal this dot transform dot position minus collision dot game object dot transform dot position. And let's see if I pass that as my direction. And let's see what happens. I'm gonna press play and now whichever way I hit it, that's the way that thing's gonna go. So here we go. First, I gotta crush it. Now I'm gonna hit it from here. I think it works. Hit it from here. Ah, it grew. Shrink. Hit it from here. It's not working. Go off the other side. Ah. Yeah, it's not doing it. Let's do this. Globals dot set debug text string dot format dir. So dir is going to substitute in for this zero value. Do, 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 do. We press play. We're going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out and jump up and smash it. Then hit it. Well, 
minus one. I think the direction is backwards. Let's try flipping this. Cut minus this dot transform dot position. Let's see what happens. I just want to make sure that I can hit it from every side and it moves in the side that I hit it from. So I crush it and then I hit it from this side. That worked. And let me try the other side. Crush it. And then from this side. Well, there you go. All right, that seems to work. So I could take off this debug thing. I just got to figure out the hitting force that is a good number. Maybe I should make that a variable. So just like the other things, I could play around with it and fix it to something that works. Push force. Push. Right now it's a 30, so I'll say 30.0F. We'll use that. Now push force I'll use instead of having a hard coded number 30, I'll say paste times the push force. Okay, yay, we made it that we could push this puck off the screen. And I think that's, that's where we're gonna stop this video. So it's a time thing, I gotta jump onto it, I gotta crush it. Then I got to knock it off the screen. Woo! And maybe 30 is too much, so I made it a variable over here. So let me try another number like 20 and see. 20 and press play. Jump on it, crush it, and hit it. That's good. Getting it closer to the edge. All right. Okay, that's good. I think that's a good point for this video to stop at. And in the next video, we are going to make probably the points for when this thing comes off the edge that we get points for it.